You emerge from the ruins in time to see the beast tamer leaping up and down, the rat you freed earlier gathered up in her arms. Thank, partner safe, happy, she squeals through tears of joy rather than sadness. Oh, isn't that lovely, Polka says, smiling. You've got slightly more complicated feelings about it. The girl announces that she's off to rejoin the rest of the main troop and trots off with her companion in tow. You see a lone tent pitched in the middle of the desert. You approach it and peer inside, but nobody's home. Surely a circus performer must be around here somewhere. A mysterious voice calls from who knows where. You look around once more, but see no signs of life. There it is again, clearer this time. You turn and look behind you. There's a severed head in the sand. Or at least, it looks severed. But it's alive? The head frantically beseeches you for aid. Apparently it hid in the sand during a monster attack and could not free itself afterward. You all grab hold and pull in an attempt to dislodge the perhaps not disembodied head. And wouldn't you know it, it was attached to a young man who performs in the circus. He helpfully informs you that there are two others who were separated from the troop during the attacks. He says they too may have hidden or otherwise disguise themselves. You resume your search, eyes primed to pick out anything unusual. There's a strange sound coming from this treasure chest. You open it to find a very alive young boy from the circus inside. You saved me, he pants. I was about to suffocate in there. The boy makes a beeline for his fellow performer's tent. This cactus doesn't look unusual at first glance. You reach out and touch it, but it wiggles? Whoa, it's actually a woman from the circus. <laughs> you saw right through my disguise. I'm impressed, she says with a confident smile. She hurries back to her fellow performer's tent. Having found the remaining two performers the young man mentioned, you return to his tent. He thanks you warmly and makes way for the ringmaster's waiting caravan.
the caravan is larger than it was when you left. Seems the troop members you rescued found their way back safely. The young man you rescued races over the moment he sees you. I found my way back. Thank you so much for saving me, he beams. The ringmaster is next in line, peppering you with praise as he wrenches your entire arm up and down in a forceful handshake. He proudly announces that you can eat and drink your fill as a show of his gratitude. Oh, and he absolutely insists you see the show. He's certain you'll love it. Finding yourself looking forward to the circus, you decide to invite Legol and Polka to come along, but they're nowhere to be found. It looks like they took off on their own, thinking it would be much more fun to go see the circus together. You decide to look for the pair. You find Polka holding a cup with some kind of golden liquid in it. A gentle-looking woman seems to be teaching him something. The woman whips the monster and roars with laughter. This little fellow sees this as a reward. Polka nods along. Aha, I see. This is most instructive. You're not completely sure what you're looking at. You decide to drag Polka away and take him to the show. You find Legol stuffing some kind of well-cooked meat into his mouth. Beside him is the Beast Tamer girl. When she notices you, she begins to thank you enthusiastically in crude language. However, your features harden when you see her looking lovingly at her monster partner. Seeing this, Legol asks, You need something? You invite Legol to come to the show and step away. You can hear the sounds of a lively crowd coming from the circus tent. The show must be about to begin. Stepping into the tent is akin to entering another universe. Clowns balance atop balls. Jugglers juggle objects with ease. Performers soar through the air on the trapeze. Your first circus show is infinitely more impressive than all the images you'd conjured in your head. Unfortunately, you also find yourself too vexed to fully enjoy it. You cannot stop thinking about the girl making nice with that monster. The young boy makes a show of stopping his ball directly in front of you and holds something out to you. Which one of these do you like best? He asks with a wink. You point at the money, but the boy simply keeps smiling at you. He makes no effort to hand it over. The boy points to his own round nose. You stare intently at his nose, but nothing happens. He then points to his hand. You look down at your own hands and... 
What? The money is already in your hand. The boy smiles wryly at you. You cannot help but gaze at the prize that so wondrously found its way into your possession. The Beast Tamer is the next performer to take the stage. It seems she's going to put on some sort of monster show, as you'd expect. Though this time, she's joined not just by the rat, but other foul creatures. And just like that, the goodwill engendered by the young boy's gift evaporates and your heart hardens anew. The Beast Tamer, however, has no idea that you harbor such simmering resentment and begins her show. Or she tries to, but one of the beasts begins raging out of control. Help! The ringmaster shouts in a panic. You instinctively grip your weapon and leap out of your seat to confront the monster. Battle time. The monster is nearly dead. You prepare to strike the killing blow, only for the beast tamer to leap between you and your prey. You unleash your fury upon the girl as she protects the monster. Polka's eyes widen as she easily parries your attack. Listen, story, she says, hugging you so tightly you can hardly move. The Beast Tamer tells you it was her fault the Beast went berserk. She accidentally trod on its tail as she issued her command. It wasn't the monster's fault, she says. Tears well up in her eyes. It was her own inexperience. She begins to sob. The Ringmaster peels her off you and gives you his heartfelt thanks for once again saving the circus. Allow me to introduce you. This is Trollis, he says. He follows up the introduction with yet another unexpected request. He wants Trollis to accompany you so she can further develop her skills. Apparently the idea came to him as soon as he saw your masterful command of the beast in battle. Trollis trembling turns her gaze to you. You take a moment to think it over. That's a fantastic idea, bellows Polka, agreeing in your stead. 
The goal turns to Trollis. We're all talking around you. Is this what you want? Trollis thinks for a moment. Yes, train, she chirps, nodding emphatically. Sensing no way to push back against the overwhelming force of Polka and the Ringmaster, you agree to take Trollis along. She breathes frantically through her nose. Do best, do best, she says eagerly. This is shaping up to be a fun journey, Polka says, visibly excited. Polka has apparently invited himself to join your crew. Legol starts to say something, but Polka is already so deep into a speech that he loses the will. We must celebrate the start of Trollis's training, the ringmaster shouts. Not a moment later, everything and everyone is in motion. The various performers jostle you about as they rush up to wish you the best and tell you to take good care of Trollis. As the dust settles, the performers settle to sleep wherever there happens to be space. You stealthily pack your belongings. You have to get out of here. This monster-loving circus just rubs you the wrong way. You reach out to wake Legol to tell him you both should get out of. I'm awake, he whispers. You look more closely and see he too has packed his things. He must have known how you felt all along. The two of you agree to sneak out of the circus. You approach the exit to find Polka standing there, as though he were waiting for you. This is sure to be awkward. He approaches you. Can I tell you something? He asks, in a far more measured tone than you've ever heard from him. He begins to recount the story of his parents. They too studied monsters. One day, when Polka was very young, monsters attacked his village, killing his parents. His mother raced to get him to safety. She told him to run and began shouting, The monsters! There! That was when the flames took her. Polka tells you that he began studying monsters in the hopes of one day understanding what she was trying to say. He lowers his head and confesses that he needs your help in order to do so. You subterrans have the power I need to solve this mystery. I know it. You search his face. He's being sincere. You nod. Polka is no longer just someone you met, or just some scholar. He is you, an orphan. You tell Polka you'll help him once he answers one question. Does he hate monsters? Hatred reduces the mind's capacity for serious inquiry, he notes, his smile exposing gritted teeth. So. He's suppressing his hatred of them beneath a veneer of reason and logic. That'll do. Already leave? Comes another voice. Your chatter must have woken Trollis. Her strength will serve us well. We should bring her with us, Polka adds, sensing your reluctance. 
serve well. Trollous parrots, sweeping you off your feet. Thus were your defenses eroded and your ranks bolstered. You depart the circus with your new companions.